Welcome to EBC Steel Creek, where we are connecting with you virtually, engaging your family, and serving your family and your community as well. Here at EBC Steel Creek, we minister to you with love and hope. We focus on the we, because we know that God will reset our focus, restore our faith, renew our commitment, reconnect our relationships, revive the body, and reveal his plan, purpose, and promises for our lives. Welcome to worship at EBC Steel Creek. Welcome again to EBC Steel Creek. We are blessed that you chose our church as your place of worship today. You can see I'm a little busy trying to do a little planting and some cleaning and weeding, only because I was inspired by Pastor Walt's new sermon series, Plant Now, Harvest Later. Now you remember last Sunday's sermon was about planting with passion. I plan to do that. But today's service takes it a little bit further. And I think Joe is taking it a little bit to heart. Joe, what are you doing? Uh, Vaughn, I call myself over here pruning, but I'm not exactly sure what that is. When we found out that our sermon title for today was going to be about the vine life, I figured I might want to find out exactly what pruning was. Pruning means to cut off dead or unwanted parts of a bush or a tree, to cut out useless or unwanted parts to foster growth and fulfillment. But that's just a, a literal definition. How about some practical application? Come on and join us for praise and worship. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are my God. I will exalt you. you're with me because you're with me hallelujah because you're with me because you're with me because you're with me Every 
everybody say, I will exhort you. God, I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are my God. Come on, sing it out of your soul. Everybody say, I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Hallelujah. I will exalt you. You are my God. my God. Come on, right there now. Just begin to give God adoration. Come on, if you will exalt Him. Hallelujah. Say it out of the fruit of your lips. God, we will exalt you. We give your name glory. We give your name honor. Come on, everybody say, I will exalt you. I will exalt you. you. I will exalt you. You are my God. Yes, you are. Come on now, if you know He's your God, you want to say, Because you're with me. Because you're with me. Because you're with me. Everybody say, I will exalt you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are my God. You are my God. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are my God. Because you're with me. Because you're with me. Because you're with me. a personal thing because you're with me I know that I can survive it because you're with me no matter the situation because you're with me hallelujah you are my God I will exalt you. Hallelujah. You are my God. Watch this. You have all power. Glory to God. You have all power. All power is in your hands. You have all power. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because you're God. Hallelujah. You have a power. You know what you're doing. Hallelujah. You have a power. You have a power. Because you're Cause I speak like Hallelujah. I speak like Hallelujah. I speak like I speak like said I speak like I speak 
life. I want to declare this decree that you shall live. Yes, God. Yes, God. You shall live. Hey, you shall live. Come on, come on. Hey, you shall live. Everybody say, I speak life. I speak life. I speak life. Hallelujah. We speak life. Said I speak life. Hallelujah. Speaking it to your children. I speak life. Speak it over your family, over your household. We speak life. Thank you, Jesus. Say, do we speak life? That you shall live. You shall live. You shall live. Hey, you shall live. Hey, you shall live. Hey, you shall live. You shall live. You shall live. You shall live. Come on, said I speak life. You shall proclaim the work of the Lord. Hallelujah. You shall live. 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 Hey. Said we speak life. Hey, we speak life. We speak life. Hey, we speak life, life. Now come on now, if you speak life, you ought to begin to speak it all over the atmosphere. Hallelujah, we speak healing. We speak deliverance. We speak prosperity. We speak peace in the name of Jesus. 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 We speak life, life. You shall live and not die. You shall live. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You shall live. Hallelujah. We're going to sing victory in the end. We shall see victory in the end. We shall see victory. We shall see victory. We shall see it grow. We shall see it grow. Come up. Come forth. Come forth in the name of Jesus. 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 Said I speak life. Hallelujah. I speak life. shall live hallelujah we speak it into existence you shall live hallelujah glory to God even in this you shall live hallelujah no matter how you feel you shall live hallelujah my family is going to live hallelujah my education it will live glory to God we speak it my finances is going to live. Hallelujah. My household is going to live. Thank you, Jesus. My grandchildren, they're going to live. Thank you, Jesus. My church family, they shall live. My past 
Jesus, we shall live. Glory to God. Everybody say, we're going to live. We're going to live. Say, we're going to live. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to live. Hallelujah. We're going to live, 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 we speak strips in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We sweet strip. Strip to your body. Strip to your body. Strip to your mind. Strip to your mind. Strip to your mind. Strip to your mind. Hallelujah! We shall live! We shall live! Hallelujah! We shall live! That's how! Hey! We shall live! Now if you know that you're gonna live through it, I said if you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're gonna live through it, that your faith has made you whole, like the woman with the issue of blood. Your faith, just the sign of a mustard seed, has made you whole. You ought to begin to lift your voices. Hey, lift your voices. Glory to God. Lift your voices. Lift your voices. And proclaim. Declare and decree. Declare and decree. Declare and decree. Declare and decree. That I shall live. So see the victory in the air. Come on, hallelujah! 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 Glory to God! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Now this praise might not be for you, but it may be for somebody else that's connected to you. And if you believe without a shadow of a doubt that you have the power, hey, and the authority, you ought to begin to lift your voices and give God the praise. message the man of God and the women of God said that they speak life they are proclaiming the word of God 
that whatever the situation you may be dealing with looks like it will not kill you it will not take you out it's a powerful statement because sometimes what you are dealing with it looks so big and statistically it looks impossible but we are often reminded in scripture uh, that there is nothing too hard for God that is what this entire series is about it's that reminder that if we stay connected to God we can speak life to any situation if we stay connected to God we can declare our victory before we face the enemy if we stay connected to God while others around us are doubting we are worshiping because it is so it is already done we trust and believe that God will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask imagine dream hope wish or think of because he's God like that and he's able like that I, I pray that you experience God wherever you are just as we are experiencing him in this moment there's somebody here today already the spirit is moving in your life seeds have been planted already through the worship team and I pray that you respond accordingly as a matter of fact, this is somebody's invitation to get connected to Jesus Christ right now. Even before we water the seed that the praise team has been planting. Based on what you just heard, God has already spoke to you. And whenever God speaks, the question must be asked, how will you respond? God wants to speak life into your situation. But we must be connected to him. Thank God for his Holy Spirit. And I pray that you are experiencing this as well today. Wow, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. y'all give me a few minutes I'm gonna try to water this seed that the praise team planted John 15 verse 1 through 5 as we continue with this series that the Lord has given us harvest now plant later is the name of the series John 15 verse 1 through 5 captures our attention on the day and it reads as follows I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener he cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more you have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you remain in me and I will remain in you for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me yes I am the vine you are the branches those who remain in me and I am them will produce much fruit for apart from me you can do nothing for part two of this sermon Series, I would like to tag today's sermon, The Vine Life. The Vine Life. If I could just help you understand what God has given me and take you back to your childhood for a moment, I want to take you back to a fable 
about a boy named Jack and his beanstalk. Uh, Jack and the beanstalk is a story of a young man who lived in poverty with his mother. Uh, Jack decided that he was tired of seeing his mother struggle, so he was going to do whatever he could to raise some money. So he told his mother, Mama, I'm going to take Bessie down to the market. Bessie was the family's cow. The, the family cow. Mama, I'm going to take Bessie down to the market, and I'm, I'm going to sell Bessie, Mama, and, and maybe off the sale we'd be able to live. Maybe off the sale, Mama, you'd be able to get you a new dress. Maybe off the sale, Mama, we'd be able to buy some additional food. And she said, go ahead, Jack, and, and I wish you the best at the market. Well, Jack was a novice at the market. He had a good heart, but he didn't know about what he was up to. And there Jack was trying to sell Bessie when a clever man came up to him and said, Jack, I will buy Bessie from you, and I will give you these three magic beans in exchange. Well, Jack, being a young man, was impressed by the term magic, and he gave up Bessie. He gave up the family cow. He gave up all he had for these three beans. Uh, he took those beans, and he went home to his mother, and he said, Mother, I got some good news. I was able to sell Bessie. And the mama said, That's good, Jack. How much money did you get? He said, Mama, I didn't get any money. I got these three magic beans. His, his mama looked at him in that way like only the mama could look. Mama was so mad. Mama was so frustrated. Mama was so hurt that she just ran off and went into her room and closed the door. Jack was the one who loved his mother. He would do everything he could for his mother. So when he realized that he hurt his mother, Jack took those beans and just threw them out of the window. But believe it or not, the man was not lying. There was some Something special about those beans. As a matter of fact, when those beans hit the ground, those magic beans planted themselves. And when those beans planted themselves, the next day when Jack woke up with tears in his eyes, not knowing what was going to happen next, he looked out of the window and he saw that those beans had been planted and they produced something. Those beans had produced a bean stalk. A bean stalk is also known as a vine. This was not an ordinary vine. This particular vine reached all the way up to the heavens. So Jack was excited. And Jack said, maybe I didn't mess up after all. And Jack climbed that vine. And ultimately, uh, Jack was able to access everything he and his mother needed. Well, like all good stories, it wasn't just that easy. When he climbed the vine, he had to face the giants. Uh, the, the, while, while I don't have time to unpack the entire story, I want to get to what I believe the moral of the story is. While it's true that we all have to face giants in our lives, the moral of this story is not necessarily the giant. Believe it or not, I have found the moral of this particular story to be in the beanstalk. I have found the moral of the particular story to be in the vine. You see, it was in the vine that Jack found every everything that he needed. Men and women of God, I believe that what Christ is saying to us in this particular text is through the vine, we will ultimately find everything that we need. Can I help you to understand what I'm talking about? John 15 brings us to a section of the gospel which is part of the farewell discourse. The farewell discourse talks about chapters 14 through 17. It's that place where Jesus is making it known uh, that it, his time has come. He's letting the 11 disciples know who remain on duty that, uh, that, that, that ultimately he came here for a reason. He came here to die and his time has now come. Uh, the, the, the farewell discourse is amazing because he reminds them of several things. First, he reminds them in the farewell discourse to not let their hearts be troubled. Uh, men and women of God, that is not the focus of our text, but I have talked to some church members and some family members this week who have a troubled heart. And so the first thing I want to tell you is that in the farewell discourse, it's called that because Jesus was on his way back to where he came from. He said, I got to leave you with some important stuff. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let the seat of your emotions take over and make you forget that I am still in charge. He Not only did he give them that in the farewell discourse, 
He said this. He says, I'm, I'm not only uh, when I have to go back, I'm never going to leave you alone. I'm going to provide a comforter. He promised in the farewell discourse that the Holy Spirit will come. And so watch this. In the most important time in the life of the disciples, when he decides that if, if I was going to leave them with something, I'm going to leave them with something pure and real right now. He said, first, I'm going to tell them to not let their heart be troubled. Second, I'm going to promise them the gift of the Holy Spirit. But the third one, if we're not careful, we might miss it. After saying, don't let your heart be troubled. After saying, I'm going to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. In the farewell discourse, he says this to the people of God. He says this thing to the disciples. He says, I want you to understand something. I am the true vine. Now, when you first look at it, you say, what does that have to do with what he said before? I believe the disciples instantly would have caught it. You see, the disciples were versed in the Old Testament and the books of the law. The vine was a symbol of Israel. Israel is the nation that God planted in the promised land. And when he planted them, his expectation was for them to be fruitful and to be a benefit and a blessing to everyone around them. You see, it was in Psalm the 80th chapter verse 8 where it was said that he brought Israel from Egypt like a grapevine. He drove away the pagan nations and transplanted Israel into that land so they could be fruitful and multiply. But y'all know how it goes. Even though that was the plan of God, sin happened. Even though the gardener being God did all he could to protect Israel, he guarded Israel, he nourished Israel, he loved Israel, but Israel had his mind on sinful things and sinful ways and instead of producing a good harvest they found themselves only producing bad fruit. Oh Jeremiah picked up on that same thing when he was prophesying to the people he said I had planted you like a choice vine, uh, a sound and reliable stock. How then did you turn against me into a corrupt wild vine? Men and women of God, Israel was planted to bear fruit and to be a blessing to everyone around them. That is why God is planting you in this season. That's why we must learn to live divine life because God has purposed us to bear fruit. And God tells us something that I'm going to repeat a couple of times. The gardener cuts off everything that is unfruitful or rotten. When God is getting ready for you to bear some fruit, he must purify you, he must nourish you, and he must correct you. I like the story of the vine. You see, the vine paints a picture of how God operates in our world. For example, when Jesus declares that he is the true vine, there are some amazing similarities that blessed me this week. It blessed me real good this week. It blessed me so good that I had to reach out to Brother Aaron via text message. And as I was getting a message ready, I said I saw something in my studies that I hadn't seen before. And shout out to Brother Reggie for doing these real, real great over here. And let me tell you something about these. I didn't even know he was going to bring them. Let me tell you some, some things that we learned about this analogy that Jesus gave us. He tells us this. It takes about three years for a grapevine to produce fruit. Did y'all know that? I don't grow a bunch of stuff, but it takes about three years. Ironically, Jesus' ministry lasted for three years. Watch this. Every time the people would come to him and treat him as Messiah and king before the three-year period was up, he would say, my time has not yet come. Every time that they wanted to give him credit for the miracle, he'd say, don't tell anybody, my time has not yet come. But when the three years had come, he did something unique. When the three years had come, he made an appointment with death. You do know that he laid down his life, don't you? They didn't take it. He laid down his life. When the three years had come, he made an appointment with death. And he said, meet me on a skull-shaped hill outside of Jerusalem. There you will find me carrying a cross. Jesus declared, I have chosen to give up my life this way. I have chosen to give up my life in this manner because I am the true vine. What do you mean that I am the true vine? What I 
mean is this, that if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Can I help you to understand what Jesus was saying? Just like we see these beautiful grapes uh, by the fact that Jesus gave it all up, by the fact that Jesus re re uh, risked it all, we are singing praises to his name over 2,000 years later. We are the result of the harvest of Jesus Christ. And the good news about it is now that we have been connected, he's calling on us to get some others connected. Metaphorically speaking, as the grape is connected to the vine, Jesus is the vine that connects us to God. As the grape is connected to the vine, Jesus is the vine that connects us to God. So shout out to all of my people out there that are living the vine life. For those of us that are living the vine life, we are reminded in 1 Timothy 2 chapter verse 5, there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Christ Jesus. Our acceptance of Jesus as Lord over our life connects us to the Father. It reconnects us to our purposes. It reconnects us to his plans. Can I make it plain for you? Since everybody ain't been in church all day days, I like that old school joint by Peaches and Herb where they simply say that reunited and it feels so good. Shout out to all the folks that used to get their groove on to Peaches and Herb because you know that you are reunited and it feels so good. For those of y'all living the vine life, you might understand him as our intercessor. You see Romans 8 and 34 reminds us who then will condemn us. No one for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us and he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand pleading for us. In other words if I can say it plainly God has acquitted us then who can condemn me? I don't care about what I did yesterday. I've been acquitted. I have been washed in the blood and I have been redeemed and every now and then the redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. For those of us living the vine life, Jesus serves as our connection to God. For it was in the book of John where he reminded us that he is the way, he is the truth, and the life. No person can come to the Father except through him. Men and women of God, if you want to be connected to the creator of the universe, if you want to be connected to the creator of the stars and the moon, you've got to get to know his son and you got to get to know him as savior. You got to get to know him as healer. You got to get to know him as deliverer. You got to get to know him as divine. And when you get to know him as divine, all of this preacher is trying to help you to do is to stay connected. In a nutshell, I'm just trying to tell you, you ought to stay on the vine. Men and women of God, let me tell you something. And living this vine life is a life that recognizes that some things in our life must come to an end if we ought to become fruitful. Living this vine life is a reminder that some things in our life must come to an end if we are to become fruitful. Jesus says, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they'll do what? Produce more fruit. You see, pruning is a fundamental process when you're trying to produce fruit, especially when you're trying to produce fruit, fruit that is connected to a vine. The Farmer's Almanac is where I went for some deeper understanding. The Farmer's Almanac told me that the essence of pruning is to produce growth. It also says that the best time to produce, to pr prune certain plants is in the winter. Oh, that made me shout. Why do you say that? Because I know some people that are in their winter season and don't fret about the winter because when you are in your winter season, God is using that season to prune some things from your life that need to be removed from the vine. Can I help you to understand that sometimes we don't like to be pruned. We don't like it but it is what it is but God has to do these things in order for us to grow. Let me see if I can help you to understand it. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite 
uh, uh, authors, Dr. Henry Cloud, uh, paints a beautiful picture about what it means uh, to prune in this, in this season of our life. The book Necessary Endings, he reminds us that in order for us to grow, he suggests that there are things that must come to an end. Oh, he gives the example of the rosebud. He talks about a gardener. Shout out to all of the gardeners out there. He says a gardener has an assignment to look at the rose flower, to look at the rose buds and determine which buds are blossoming, which buds have potential to blossom, which buds are dead, and which buds are dying. You see, if the gardener allows the dying and dead buds, uh, buds to remain on the vine, those dying and dead buds will suck the necessary nutrients from the buds that are trying to blossom and trying to grow. As long as the dead stuff stays on the vine, it's pulling the good stuff from the stuff that's trying to blossom. Can I say it even plainer? There are some people, places, conversations, and things in our lives that are draining us. There are some people, places, conversations, and things that are draining you. Those people, places, conversations, and things are taking away resources from where they ultimately need to be. And what is worse, Dr. Cloud also tells us when it talks about necessary endings in our lives, he said the most dangerous type of person is a hoarder. He says a hoarder is one that holds on to stuff well beyond its expiration date. Might I suggest to you that there are some spiritual hoarders in my presence right now who could possibly be holding on to some stuff well beyond its expiration date. I know uh, that you were done bad on yesterday, but you can't take the negativity of yesterday into your today. I know that you were set up the last time, but if you trust God for a new thing, don't let the old baggage mess up the new thing that God is trying to do. I know the last church you was at hurt you, but don't let the new ministry that the Lord sent you to uh, be a hindrance because God is trying to bless you real good at the new place. He's trying to use you for his glory at the new place. There are some folk in the house that have been hoarding some stuff for way too long and the Bible and Dr. Cloud declares that some stuff in our life has to come to an end. You see, divine life requires us to allow God to remove everything from us that is draining us and causing us harm. Here's your homework. You and the Holy Spirit get together now. What is going on in your life that is draining you and causing you harm? Will you allow the gardener to prune it? Or you, will you continue to hoard it? I got a little tongue tied. I'll run it one, back one more time. When you do your homework and you identify those things that have been draining necessary resources from your life, will you allow God to prune it? Or will you continue to hoard it? I need you to understand that Pruning is so important because after the pruning is over, you are now in position to grow at a God-driven rate. After the pruning is over, you are now in position to grow at a God-driven rate. You see, the reason I framed it that way is because your rate of growth might not be my rate of growth, but I'm still going to grow if I allow God to cut the dead stuff off so that I could blossom where he wants me to blossom. And it's important that we blossom. It's important that we grow because the more connected we are, the more productive we will be. It's right there in the text. Jesus tells the disciples, he says, remain in me and I will remain in you for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine and you cannot be fruitful unless you do what? Remain in me. Old Cook's Illustrated blessed me real good this week. It talked about the fact that a, stem, a grape with the stem on uh, will last a whole lot longer than a grape that has been removed from the stem. It says, as a matter of fact, as long as the grape is on the stem and it is periodically inspected, when you inspect the grapes looking for any of the dead stuff, you find a dead grape, you gotta remove it. You find a dead relationship, you gotta remove it. You find a dead friendship, you gotta remove it. You find a dead conversation, you gotta remove it. You find some gossip, you gotta remove it. You find some haters, you gotta remove it. You gotta remove 
all of the bad stuff from it. Because if you remove the bad stuff and the grape stays on the stem, it will last a mighty long time. Men and women of God, if you are going to live the vine life, you must stay connected to the vine. To stay connected to the vine, you have to stay connected to the word. The more you connect to the word, the more you connect to the vine, and the more productive you will be. But here is the raw and the real. The real and the raw. The for real, for real, keep it 100. I have come to the conclusion that most Christians, folks that look like me, folks that look like you, they may accept in their head that they need to be in the word of God, but few have accepted that in their heart. What do you mean, preacher? In other words, if you ask somebody, do I need to study the Bible? The answer will be yes. If you ask a Christian, do they need to do a devotion? The answer will be yes. But if you poll most Christians, many go weeks and months without reading the word for themselves. I could be up here telling you anything. You ain't opened your Bible since 1987. I'm trying to help somebody because I want to see you win, win, win no matter what. But you've got to know the word of God for yourself. And not only that, you got to make sure that the devil doesn't distract you, especially in this digital season that we live in. Can I be raw and real for a minute as the word of God is going forth right now? Somebody being distracted at home as the word of God is going forth right now. Somebody inbox is blowing up and somebody getting a DM right now. Men and women of God, I'm trying to tell you that the moment your head and heart agree that you can't live without the word, the moment your head and your heart agree that you need this word and you are starving for it. The moment that you start to chase after the word of God, for real, for real, just like you might get that steak at Outback, you gotta be hungry for the word of God if you want to be connected to the vine. I want to know if you for real. I can tell if you for real based on the last time you looked in his word. Every answer that you need is found in the word of God and for some strange reason the people of God won't go to his word I said it once before I'm going to say it one more time I want you to win, win, win no matter what we are a ministry that believes in victory I pray that you have abundance in life like Jesus talked about but the only way you're going to experience that is that if you get in the word of God and listen, listen Listen, let me tell you something else. Uh, this is so important to me because there is something else that God told me to tell you. He said not only is it important to stay connected to the vine so that you can produce. He said this, fruit produced on the vine will last in the drought. I hope y'all heard me. That fruit produced on the vine will last in the drought. Jesus said, yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I am them will produce more fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. Men and women of God, when you are living this vine life, you won't let anything in this season of life disconnect you from the source of life. You see, the vine fruit uh, such as grapes do well in droughts. Vine fruits such as grapes do well in environments that other fruits could not survive. Vine fruits are built for this. I hope that blesses somebody who's going through something that you are connected through the vine uh, and even though you are in a drought, you are built for this. And Jesus is explaining to his disciples and this explanation would have blessed their whole soul. Men and women of God, I'm trying to help you because people like you and me will encounter droughts on the journey. Shout out to everybody that has experienced a health crisis. A health crisis can put you in a drought. If you ever felt lonely in your life like nobody could understand what you was trying to say, it can put you in a drought. If somebody close to you have ever gone home to be with the Lord, it can put you in a drought. If you ever been misunderstood when you was just trying to be yourself. Uh, it can put you 
you in a drought. Uh, believe it or not, doing church work uh, can put you in a drought. Uh, running a small business uh, can put you in a drought. Uh, raising your own children can put you in a drought. Uh, but Jesus declared, just like the grapevine will survive, as long as you can make remain connected to him, you will survive the drought. Uh, that's why I'm all about this vine life. Because living the vine life, uh, I remember that I'm built for this. Uh, I can make it through some stuff uh, that is taking some other folk out. Uh, I wish I had some folk that could testify. You know some folk that gave up. You know some folk that threw in the towel. And real being honest, uh, you felt like giving up too. But even when you let go, oh, you found yourself connected to something. And that what you was connected to, it would not let you fall. I wish I had some folks that were living the divine life. That say every now and then, even when I let go, he will not let me fall. Men and women of God, I learned a lot growing up. A lot of phrases that impacted me. Back in the 90s, Tupac Shakur had a tattoo across here that said thug life. And many folks I knew grew up in the thug life. But when I got older, I met some other folks. They said they was about the salt life. They said they lived by the ocean, and they was about the salt life. I started listening to different music, and a whole bunch of music talked about the good life. But then I was riding through the hood, and I ran up on some young brothers. They said they bout that life. If you don't know what it means to be bout that life, I suggest you don't go to the hood. But then I was on social media, and I saw some folks talking about they was living their best life. They was flexing their gold rings. They was flexing their gold necklaces. They was flexing all of their trips. Shout out if you got it going on. But I came to argue this morning. That ain't necessarily the best life. Stuff is good, but it ain't your best life. Friends are good, but it ain't your best life. I have decided that the best life is this bond life. I am in the bond life. It means I've decided to follow Jesus and ain't no turning back. My assignment is to get as many people as possible connected to the same one that saved me. I'm about that bond life. You see, on that bond life, Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. In the vine life, the name of the Lord of a strong power. In the vine life, the righteous run to it and we find safety. I'm about that vine life. I'm about that vine life. You may be about another kind of life, but I'm about that vine life. Why do you talk so much about the vine life? Because there's something about the name of Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. I wish I had some folk out there that could testify that there's something about the name of Jesus. Maybe I can't articulate it. Maybe I can't explain it right. But I dare you to call him for yourself. I dare you to type it in on the keyboard for yourself. When you're going through cancer, call on the name of Jesus. When your children ain't acting right, in the name of Jesus. When your boss ain't acting right, in the name of Jesus. COVID-19, there is a powerful name. The greater is your name. The name is Jesus. The sweetest name I know. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's something about the name Jesus. Maybe I have a flashback to where he brought me from. I was six years old when I wanted to get baptized, but I messed up a whole lot between six and forty. I made bad choices between 6 and 40, but I'm so glad when I didn't know to call his name. 
my folks were calling on the name of Jesus when I was out at night. They didn't know where I was. They were calling on the name of Jesus when I was deployed to a combat zone. Enemy fire coming my way. There was something about the name of Jesus. 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 Late in the midnight hour. Jesus. When everybody else is going on home. Jesus. With tears in my eyes. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, 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 Jesus. Listen, listen. Don't go anywhere. Don't miss your blessing. I want the praise team to come right now. That's something that they're going to minister to you as they are ministering to you. And as they're coming, I'm going to give the invitation to respond to whatever God has said to you today. We've been planting seeds from the moment we started worship today. The Holy Spirit moved in such a powerful way on the praise team. And it was my job just to add water and now God is going to give the increase there's somebody who's watching right now you need to connect to Jesus you need to connect to a church home you know who you are don't wait for the doors to open we are in a new normal we don't know what tomorrow looks like God has blessed us with this opportunity and technology that you can get connected today the information is before you on how to get connected. As this praise team blesses us one more time, I need somebody to pray who does not have a connection with God. Maybe you had a connection and life happened and things are not what God will have them to be. God is not here to condemn you. He's standing with his arms wide open saying, welcome home. Wherever you are, as you hear this word, I encourage you, to click the join link I encourage you to click that link and, and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and in one hour somebody's going to call and minister to you in person in one hour we're going to make sure that we bless you and do what God has called us to do there's so much more that I can say but I'm going to let the praise team do the rest they're going to minister to us and this is your song this is your moment may God bless you and I look forward to hearing from all of you as you respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shed your 
We are so grateful for our opportunity to serve with our brothers and sisters from Loaves and Fishes on yesterday. The only way that we could have such a partnership is by what you do at this particular moment. We're encouraging you to continue to be obedient to the Holy Spirit as it relates to your giving. We certainly understand that this is a tough time for some people. So as the Holy Spirit guides you and as you are able, we just encourage you to continue to plant seeds, continue to trust God and watch God make a way out of no way. So as we continue to serve the community, as we continue to do the work of the cross, 
We just ask you to continue to be guided by God in your giving. My spirit is filled. I don't know about you, but that was a powerful word from our pastor. And you know, you can always go back and watch us on YouTube or Facebook or on our streaming platform on our website. But we want to keep your spirit fed during the week. So we offer to you every Wednesday morning, our Wednesday prayer call, 6 a.m. till about 6.15. You can get your spirit fed and have a great intention for the day. And then Wednesday evening, we are still holding Bible study. See the details on your screen as to how you can connect and be a part of it. We're taking care of your mind, your spirit, and we're also ensuring that you're healthy. We're taking care of that body. You'll remember we've been offering virtual trainings for the month of April. And again, someone has been taking it very literally. 99, 100, yeah right. I guess I am taking some of this a little bit literal. Anyway, we do hope that you've had a chance to take advantage of some of the virtual workouts and activities that we had throughout the month of April. And please make sure that you take a look at our website in the months to come because we will also have activities for all of your health and wellness so that by the time all of this is over, we'll all be ready. Now that's going to be the stuff for all of us adults, but we also have stuff for the kids. Brittany? DYM, we miss you so much. This is Miss Brittany here from EBC Steel Creek, and I just want to let you guys know that we care about you, we're thinking about you. I know schools are empty, and so are the playgrounds. You can't do some of the things that you normally do. But listen, we've got a lot of things in store for you, and I can't wait to share it with all of you. So I'm thinking a little Zoom Bible study maybe, right? What about you? Well, keep your eyes and ears open. We've got emails coming and we've got some phone calls coming. So I want you to stay tuned for all the things that we have coming up next. And most of all, stay encouraged. We love you. EBC Steel Creek, DYM, you are on our minds. Again, thank you so very much for making EBC Steel Creek your place to worship on this Sunday. We encourage you to continue to like us on Facebook, like us on YouTube, and refer us and bring in all your friends to watch us every Sunday. We are here always with a powerful word for you. We are EBC Steel Creek.